Moto America crowned another champ, and he's here to talk about it on the next Moto Champion Talk Show, brought to you by Yoshimira. Welcome to the Next Moto Champion Talk Show. I'm your host, Danielle Teal. The latest issue of Next Moto Champion Magazine, featuring Yoshimura Suzuki writers Roger Hayden and Tony Elias, is out and available for you to download for free at nextmotochampion.com. Now for the news. Coming up at the end of the month, AMA Pro Flat Track will be back at the Charlotte Half Mile July 30th. Tickets are available at amaproracing.com. MotoGP will return this coming weekend to Saxon Ring, where Rossi and Lorenzo certainly hoping to put Aston behind them. After a crash for Rossi and a solid 10th place finish for Lorenzo at the Dutch GP round, Marquez sits on top of the championship by more than 20 points. Moving on to the latest in World Superbike and Moto America. American Nicky Hayden had an excellent showing at his home track at Laguna Seca this past weekend. After making it on the box in race one, Nicky said, we can be happy with the podium at the track I love, with the fans I love. Nicky rounded out the top five for race two. Jonathan Ray and Tom Sykes split wins for the weekend, and after round nine, here's a look at your World Superbike standings. On to Moto America in the KTM RC Cup. After a major race incident involving six riders and a red flag, the race was shortened from 12 to eight laps, and your top three would be Ashton Yates on top, followed by Brandon Posh and Anthony Maziato III. In Super Stock 600, your 2016 champ Bryce Prince finished on top of the box, followed by Richie Escalante and Nick McFadden. In Super Sport, J.D. Beach continued to put the pressure on his championship-leading teammate Garrett Gerloff after notching his fifth win in a row, narrowing the points lead to just 14 points going into the final round. J.D. took the win, followed by DeBeast in second and Gerloff in third. The gloves were off in Bizaz Superstock 1000 in two epic races to the finish, but it was Josh Heron who took the second Moto America Championship of the season. After some heated battles, some exchanged word, some rider relegation, Heron earned enough points to put him in an untouchable 50 points ahead with one round to go, thus making him your 2016 Moto America Superstock 1000 champion. And we have him on this week's show to congratulate him. And then there was Superbike. Your champion still hasn't been decided yet, but your Honda Superbike Showdown Honda Civic winner was Cameron Bobier, who took home the keys after splitting wins with his teammate Josh Hayes. That makes it Josh's second win of the season, but his 60th of his career. Congrats, Josh. Tony Elias took a P2 and a P3 while his teammate Roger Hayden suffered a race one crash, more or less taking him out of the championship hunt at this time. Press releases from the weekend can be found at nextmotochampion.com. And now, courtesy of Moto America, it's your Laguna Seca highlights. Let's take a look at your standings after round eight. The final round will take place at New Jersey Motorsports Park in September. 
Get your tickets at MotoAmerica.com. We've got a quick commercial break for you, and when we come back, we have part one of the Pikes Peak experience alongside last week's guest, Rennie Skaysbrook. Stay tuned. <laughs> Last week, we had on second place in class fourth overall finisher and Pikes Peak first timer, Rennie Skaysbrook. Here's a look at part one of a little video put together for the Cycle News KTM backed run at Pikes Peak. There's not a lot of things I've done really well in my life and when I committed to this project I said I'm going to do this properly because I don't want to be 65 years old sitting in the pub crying into my beer thinking I didn't do a good job or I didn't try hard enough. So yeah, FanFest was awesome. Uh, last year I went there as a, as a beer drinking spectator. It was wild. Um, I'd never seen that side of the, the race weekend. I'm always on the other side. I'm never. I'm always the one getting the autograph. I'm never the one signing the autograph. So that was really cool. And and, I, and the people were lovely because especially being an Aussie as well, um, they really appreciated the fact that an international was here and. Um, had a lot of had a lot of people saying they love the accent and all that stuff and took a lot of photos with kids and put the kids on the bike and I mean I got a real thrill out of it. We had 500 uh, posters to be signed and they were all gone within, and I signed pretty much every one of them, they were all gone within a couple of hours. Uh, the fans are so knowledgeable and enthusiastic and, and the way that Colorado just gets behind this event, I mean, there's a lot of places in the world that I've been to in motorsport events that could really learn something from this. I mean, it, it, it was so good for everyone involved. It was great for us. It gave KTM and, and Cycle News a huge amount of exposure. Got my name out there a little bit. Go, made the fans all nice and happy. All the kids had smiles on their faces. And um, hopefully I spelled everyone's name correctly. And uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome. I had a great time. Going to bed at 8 o'clock, trying to get to sleep at 8 o'clock for a person that's used to going to bed at 10 or 11 o'clock, and then getting up at 12, and then going out and racing one of the most dangerous races in the world. Some guys are good at that, and I know I can be good at it, but I didn't take it into consideration. I thought initially that, you know, we'd be getting up at 4, 5 o'clock, uh, but I didn't, I didn't think at all that it would be uh, one o'clock, and I, so I didn't even, I, I don't know, there's not much you can really do to prepare it aside from go to bed at seven o'clock at night every night for a month, uh, which is just, you just can't do it in normal life, or I can't anyway.
great thing about riding a motorbike fast is you don't think about anything else. You can have, marriage can be breaking down, you can be broke as hell, you can be getting sued, but if you're going 150 mile an hour through a corner, none of that matters. And that has never been more true than a pike speed. Because if you did think about that kind of shit, you'd be dead. Uh, I say the perfect analogy for it is Greg Tracy, who's won this event many times, said to me that this is exactly as close as you'll get to big wave surfing on a motorcycle. This is you know, going out to the gnarliest wave you can possibly get on a motorbike and riding it. And he's so spot on. Right, so I've been a road racer for about 15 years. You can't compare the two. Like, it's a, it's a different sort of mindset. It's like the TT. You know, the, the margin for error is minuscule. There is no runoff. Like, the runoff is the cliff. We tried to make the bike uh, a showroom piece for KTM and KTM Power Parts. Everything that's on there except for the belly pan is a KTM part or a KTM Power Part. Actually, so beg your pardon, there's sprockets as well. That's the other aftermarket piece that we have on it. The whole idea is to show people that you can go and buy this bike, you can put this stuff on there and you can go to Pikes Peak and you can be competitive. You made a killer, dude. Man, you crushed it. Oh, thanks. I think I did. <laughs> oh, that's good. It was it was a great thing, but it's something you can't get too excited about. It's it's a cool thing to have, nice thing to have on the on the resumes, pole position at Pikes Peak. But no one worries about who got pole position at Pikes Peak. <laughs> they all, all I care about is the race, and rightfully so. Next week, we'll conclude this video. You don't want to miss it. All right, so we've given away a Speedway Motorsport Shelter, a set of Bridgestone tires, and last month, an American Cargo Trooper backpack. This month, our great sponsor, Bridgestone, has stepped up again to give away another set of tires. This time, it's a set of Battle Axe RS10 tires, and all you have to do is sign up for the weekly newsletter at the front page of nextmotochampion.com, and the winner could be you. Good luck. And now, it's time for this week's Product Spotlight. In this week's product spotlight, we're out here underneath the Nexmoto Champion tent taking a look at two products from Capit. Now, you may know Capit from being a tire warmer used by MotoGP riders like Jorge Lorenzo and Valentino Rossi, but they make a number of other things. Heated clothing, rim racks, motorcycle covers, and helmet dryers, which are the two things that we're looking at today. Sometimes it's the little things that make a product easier and more enjoyable to live with. In this case of the motorcycle cover, it's this nice carrying bag that will keep your cover clean and organized. This is the exact same cover that MotoGP teams trust to protect their motorcycles. It's 100% polyester, internally scratch proof and resistant to 392 degrees Fahrenheit. The exterior has an oil repellent treatment that is designed to let the rain just roll right off. When it comes to the sun, the Capit cover will protect your motorcycle from UVA which means over time your bike won't fade or change colors due to the sun. The Capit cover comes in six different colors. It's customizable, you can get a logo on each side and the front and the back. As I mentioned earlier, it's 100% Italian made and it comes with a three year warranty. A bike cover is a must have for track days to keep it dry and reduce the chance of someone with sticky fingers grabbing a GoPro or a lap timer off your motorcycle. It's also a great way to keep your bike clean and reduce the chance of it getting scratched while in your garage, which is why you might want to think of this cover as a safe investment at around that $100 mark. Another great track day item from Capit is their helmet dryer. Whether it's sweat or rain, a wet helmet is the last thing you want to put on. A wet helmet can harbor bacteria, fungus, and produce a smell that you won't want to be stuck with on your next ride, which is why Capit has made this helmet dryer. A wet or damp helmet can also add fogging issues with your visor. This Capit helmet dryer is built with an aluminum base and a hard plastic exterior shell. The interior holds a fan and heating element. These are available in black and silver at both 220 and 110 volts. 
This helmet dryer is designed for both street and off-road helmets, and the fan is so quiet that you can barely hear it. Caffet gives you the option to just circulate room temperature air with the blue button or add the heating element by switching on this red button. Within 15 minutes, you have a dry helmet that's ready to get you back on the track, or you have a dry helmet that's ready to be put away for your next ride. So at 199, that helmet dryer is not just an investment in comfort, it's also an investment in the lifespan of your helmet. The same way as the bike cover is another investment in your motorcycle. So we took a look at the bike cover from Capit and the helmet dryer. We found them at bikers-lab.com and you can too. And that's this week's product spotlight. When we come back, we have your 2016 Moto America Super Stock 1000 champ, Josh Heron. Woodcraft-CFM.com is your made-in-the-USA aftermarket parts specialist when it comes to rear sets, clip-ons, sliders, engine covers, and more. Woodcraft is the exclusive distributor of brands like Armor Bodies, Cycle Mount, and new for 2016, Hindle Exhaust, a combination of power, quality, and value that you won't find anywhere else. Find them all at woodcraft-cfm.com. k and Performance Air Intake Systems. For more airflow in, more horsepower out. Guaranteed. So... How fast does this thing go? Depends on who's in the sidecar. It's pretty comfortable in there. Let's go for a ride. All right. Definitely misread this one. Can I tow motorcycle? Great race for great rides. Swing in a minute. And we're back, and after taking eight wins this season, seven consecutively, he's your newest Moto America champion. He's the 2016 Super Stock 1000 champ, now the number one plate holder, your wheels in motion, mean Yamaha rider, our good friend, Josh Heron. Josh, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Yeah. First and foremost, congratulations on another national championship. But let's get right down to business. The last round um, that ultimately decided your championship fate was a bit of a tough one. There was a bit of an up and down without trying to enhance the drama. Give the fans a little idea of how the last round went down for you. Yeah, uh, you know, it was a tough weekend for sure. We uh, we had a lot of uh, problems with the bike on Friday and Saturday that, that uh, you know, in the first three sessions or the first, let's see, free practice two and three, we were only able to do like seven or eight laps. So I was like stressing out to the max before the race even started. And then uh, we had another problem with the bike, and we crashed in qualifying, and and uh, so we ended up tenth on the grid. Um, so for the start of the race, I was really nervous, and and uh, you know not really sure how it was going to go. But once the once the flag dropped, it was uh, it was pretty good. You know, we had probably the best battle that we've had all year. Uh, it was me, Corti, Eslick, Fong, and Schultz, uh, all pretty much within within a half a second of each other. Once the race kind of got settled. Um, and there was some some drama with the yellow flags where they I guess uh, maybe Danny and Danny and Court T passed under a waving yellow. Uh, you know I I didn't. Somebody had said something about it after the race. Uh, you know I had finished third in the race. Me and Court T had a really big scrap at the, on the last lap. Somebody said something about them passing under waving yellow. Um, and something something ended up happening where the, I guess maybe Corti complained about Danny uh, passing under the wave in yellow, and it ended up getting turned back around on Corti, and they both got penalties. So uh, I stayed out of it because I didn't want to. I didn't want to target on my back. I had a you know a big enough lead going into the event that I knew if hey this weekend doesn't go that great, we still have a forty something point lead going into New Jersey. So I don't need to do anything here. You know, just go try and win the races. Um, like I said, I didn't want to target on my back for race two, so I just tried to stay out of it. And even whenever they, when they, uh, you know, announced that we won the first race because of their penalties, you know, my team was like, "Well, do you want, do you want us to go get the trophy?" I was like, "No, like I don't, I don't care about the trophies. Let's just go finish the weekend. I don't want anybody thinking that I had any part in that." And uh, so that's what we did, and we went into race two, and um, I'm pretty sure everybody 
was was mad about it anyway so they were going to be scrapping pretty hard um but it was a pretty uh uneventful race danny crashed out a second while courty was leading and courty pulled a big lead um and then i ran off in turn six <laughs> and almost crashed so i ended up having a really lonely race uh to finish fourth um i was like three or four seconds behind third so it was a pretty boring race i wasn't sure if i had clinched it or not we came in, they were doing the math, and, and they they announced I clinched it. Then I went to go on the podium to get my championship award, and and they didn't let me go up because I guess uh, the Aprilia team had protested us and was saying that we had an illegal motor or something. And so so we didn't, you know, it was the, the home race for the team, and, uh, you know, Wheels in Motion was there, which is our title sponsor. McGraw Power Sports was there. Race Fuels. Wiener Schnitzel was there. Everybody on our team that supports us, it was their home weekend, and we weren't able to, you know, go celebrate the championship that we earned, you know, completely, uh, you know, on our own. It wasn't, you know, everybody was complaining about, oh, you wouldn't have won if Corti didn't get a penalty, but, you know, we had a, I almost clinched it, you know, after the, I, I had a 50 point lead going into the weekend. So there's no chance that he would have even beat me anyway. So it kind of sucks that, that that's how they turned it around. And, you know, I think they were being kind of sore losers about it. And, and, uh, it's, it was a pretty immature thing to do, but, um, you know, we are, are the champions and we're going to put the number one plate on our bike and, and go have some fun at Jersey. Right. It was a little bit anticlimactic, especially after all the hard work this season. But you did get to take the cha championship ultimately at the end uh, of the protest and them checking out your motor and things like that. So you did get the win um, at the end of the day. So talk about it for all your sponsors. It was 22,000 fans in attendance this weekend. How important was it that you took it at this weekend? Fiance was there. How, how important was it? Uh, it was huge for me. Like I said, all of our, all of our sponsors were there. Uh, I signed on with Wiener Schnitzel like halfway through the year. Like that's right when I started my winning streak and, uh, to have an outside industry sponsor like that come and, and give out free hot dogs all weekend and, and just be there to support the series. It was to me really important to get the win for them, but also for my team, just to, to prove how good of a season that we had, that we could clinch it around early. I think that's a, a you know, a, a dominance thing and and we we proved that we had the best equipment and and we rode the smartest all year and and we we earned it so um you know to me it was it was really important because especially because in 2013 you know Hayes had a few penalties that that kept him from winning the championship and ultimately get got me the championship and I've always kind of felt like you know I worked hard that year but it wasn't a hundred percent earned and I wanted to have a championship that I earned and, and won a bunch of races and and that's what we did this year and like you said it was kind of, kind of anticlimactic but um you know it's still a championship and we're still really excited about it and and uh nobody can take it away right and there were free hot dogs to celebrate uh at the <laughs> end of the weekend um there was a tremendous response on social media Tony Ely has posted a picture of you being the champ congratulating <laughs> you what do you have to say to all your fans just sticking through you especially after you made the comeback to the domestic series last season you kind of had to work your way back in the response was positive but i mean how do you feel getting the the positive response from the fans as well it's good you know i ha i haven't seen anything negative except for you know a couple text messages of people sending me photos that somebody posted but uh everything on my end has been really positive and and you know everybody's being really cool about it um it was pretty cool that tony elias posted a posted a photo i wasn't expecting it but he's he's a really nice guy and, and he's a you know i think a big help to our series and and uh i think that was that was pretty cool of him to do and um but but yeah like you said you know i'm just i'm super happy to to be able to get a championship it's something uh that meant a lot to me just because mainly because my crew chief and i we've been trying for a long time together to get a championship and We'd, we'd always got so much bad luck, me and Gary Dean, trying to get a championship. And, and he's always had so much bad luck, whether it be with me or Jake Lewis or, you know, whoever it was. And uh, so to get it with him, I think, makes it extra special. And, uh, you know, also the main motorsports team is just kind of a – we you know we got a semi-truck, but it's but it's a small – team and it's uh you know Amin Sajadi the team owner puts in a big effort every year to make it possible and and uh to get it as the underdogs and and uh kind of the the a uh, little bit better funded privateer team makes it extra special to us and and uh I think that that the fans recognize that and and think it's even cooler. 
Very good. And we talked to Amin Sajadi, your team owner, um, just after you won the championship. And he said, you know, we make it look easy winning six really hard-fought consecutive wins in a row and the seventh um, being the last one that you got. But talk about the effort. He said it's not easy at all. So talk about the effort, the relationship between you two. This is your second season together. So talk about how important that was in the big picture. I mean, it's it's huge. You know, uh, he, he – he does everything that he needs to to try and get us on the best equipment that he can. Uh, I mean, the guy <laughs> drives around in a 1990s Corolla or something. You know, that's his daily driver. So he's definitely not, you know, living the high life or anything. So I think it's really cool seeing that and seeing the dedication from him. Uh, you know, we have a lot in common. We both really enjoy basketball and, and just a lot, a lot of stuff that we have in common that we enjoy hanging out at the track and talking about and so it's cool that it's more of a more of a family thing than than a corporation and and uh you know everybody loves a factory ride but but it's also nice being like i said the underdogs and and kind of living the american dream and taking it away from the guys with lots of money it, it just feels really good oh i love that 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 was really good josh so we want to get you on to congratulate you did you do anything to celebrate the championship at the end of the day i know it wasn't exactly how you would have liked it to go but i mean did you do anything to celebrate after the race uh i mean we went we went out to eat you know me and my me and my fiance we met uh nine years ago at laguna uh we had our first date at el torito there in canary row so we took the team out and we went out uh went out and ate there and then uh after that, we went out to the turn 12 party. You know, that's where everybody goes at the end of the night. And and uh, Wiener Schnitzel had had uh, all the drinks for us, so it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, we we got to celebrate there. You know, we didn't get to at the track really, but but uh, once we found out that we won and and we got to go celebrate, you know, we we had a lot of fun and and uh, yeah, just enjoyed the night. Right. When we come back, we're going to talk about what's coming up for you um, in the very near future. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Hi, I'm David Fisher. Briar Bauman. Brandon Robinson. Brad Baker. Corey Texter. And Kenny Coolbath. Dan Bromley. Shana Texter, and I run Evans Coolant. What I like most about Evans Coolant is I never have to worry about the bike overheating, so we're on, on the line. I uh, don't have to worry about overheating. In all my years of racing, I've never found a product that gives me the peace of mind to do what it's going to do like Evans. I run Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Coolin'. Gotta have the best to go fast. performance air intake systems for more airflow in more horsepower out guaranteed and we're back and we're talking to your newly crowned moto america super stock 1000 champ our good friend josh heron josh uh, we just congratulated you on taking the number one plate and now we want to talk about moving forward to the final round uh, obviously a lot of pressure's got to be off after taking the the championship so what are you going to do going into the final round just extend the points lead or what yeah you know i think we had we had talked about uh doing super bike there but it's it's just kind of short notice we need to do a lot of testing you know we don't want to go there and, and not look good uh i think we're going to just stay in the super stock class and, and try and extend the lead we definitely don't want to go there and get zero points in super stock and, and make it look like we tied you know we want to make it look like we dominated the year and and uh just go and have fun i think i'm gonna do a lot of training from here uh from now to then and and just try and try and put on the best race that I can there and, and uh, try and beat those guys. Sounds like a really good plan. You can do anything else besides training, though. It's a long five weeks off. Uh, next Wednesday, actually, uh, I'm going out to, to Georgia to do my uh, the races at the Heron Compound. That's on July 23rd and 24th. So we're going to be out there doing that for you know the, on the weekend, but I'll be home for about a week. Uh, and then after that, I think I'm going to do some uh, just some track day riding with some friends out here and and uh, just try and enjoy the summer out here in the heat, riding my bicycle, and and uh, and yeah, just enjoy the uh, enjoy the moment. 
and soak in being the 2016 Super Stock 1000 champion. Josh, well, thanks for coming on the show. You're a good friend of ours, old friend for that matter, and we love seeing you succeed uh, in your own right. This one was well-deserved and hard fought for, so congratulations to you and the entire team, and thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much, guys. See you. Absolutely. We'll talk to you soon, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. You saw his front brake slammed on. Thanks for tuning in to another great episode of the Next Moto Champion Talk Show. The Kawasaki 50th Anniversary World Superbike Bicycle Ride at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca was a hit. Kawasaki legends, stars of the world Superbike and Moto America, including Kawasaki champions Eric Bostrom and Jonathan Ray, along with Moto America riders Bobby Fong, Dave Anthony, and other team riders from both World Superbike and Moto America paddock were in attendance. Loads of fun was had, and they'll be doing it again next year. Check out the pics on Next Moto Champion Instagram page. Track day season's in full swing, and Next Moto Champion supports two organizations, Sport Bike Track Time and N2 Track Days. Both have something for everyone. No matter where you are, what your availability, surely one of these two has something for you. Check them out at sportbiketracktime.com and n2td.org and find your perfect track day today. And for all you ladies out there, Sport Bike Track Girl will be hosting another all-ladies track day at Talladega in Alabama on September 5th. The full press release and more information can be found at nextmotochampion.com. If you don't want to miss anything from Moto America and AMA Pro Flat Track, be sure to tune in for more this season, including your favorite racers, fast products, Moto America, and AMA Pro Flat Track coverage. Don't forget to join the others and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Join the newsletter and get this show and more in your inbox each Friday. And last but not least, all of us at Next Moto Champion are avid supporters of our military men and women, and we're proud to support Vet Motorsports. Check them out at vetmotorsports.org. And that's all for this week and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. should know it by heart, but I don't. Like I can't, we'll do mostly pictures on this. I'll give you plenty of pictures. 